Camera lenses truly are the heartbeat of the art we like to call videography. And a lens can only be defined as how useful it is for us to capture that art. And today we will be discussing one of Canon's holy trinity lenses, the Canon 15-35 f2.8 IS USM. I'm Christopher Mosley and I shoot mostly music videos, product reviews, weddings and events. So if you shoot those type of things, this review is going to be most relevant to you. So if that's you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications because I got a lot of reviews coming your way in the near future. I bought this lens after owning several EF mount lenses, using adapters, just trying to get the right focal length for what I was trying to capture. So I ended up selling my 24-70 f2.8, my 85mm 1.4 to get this lens and basically to compensate for how much this lens costs. If you didn't know, this lens is around $2,299, that's $2,299 right now retail. I ended up finding a deal on it, getting it used for about $1,600. So I just wanted to tell you guys why I purchased this lens and give you a basically full review of this lens and how I use it and how it's useful to me. So you can kind of decide if it's something that you'll be needing or worth purchasing for the type of work that you do. Today we will be talking about build quality, image quality, price and features of this lens so stay tuned now let's get into the first topic which is the build quality of this lens now it feels like a hard plastic not really like metal i think it's magnesium alloy is the type of material they're using right now so i'm not going to say it really feels cheap it feels like a decent quality of lens but it doesn't feel like the metal l series metal lenses that you're used to as far as the old school uh, l series lenses it's a lighter uh, more compact magnesium alloy type of material. It feels pretty good, a nice smooth zoom ring and focus ring, and of course a nice control ring, which is a new feature of the new RF mount lenses. Um, it features a new 12 prong connection pin on the back of the lens, which is new to the RF mount lenses. So that's a pretty nice feature. It's supposed to give the lens a better connection with the camera for faster autofocusing and uh, use of that control ring, as I mentioned a few seconds ago. Um, it's 1.85 pounds, which is not really very heavy. It's pretty convenient, but it's a nice bulky size. I, I like the heft to it. Some people don't like that, but I feel like it, I like the heft that this lens has to it. Um, it's an 82 millimeter filter thread. So if you want to use filters on it, you'll need an 82 millimeter filter for it as far as neutral density filters or UV filters or anything of that nature. If I read correctly, this lens has something called air sphere coating which is supposed to be something that's said to minimize flaring and ghosting with this lens. Now, I don't know how accurate that is. I have to test it out in the field just to see if that's something that's accurate, but that's just something that was listed on Canon's website. Also, it has something called a fluorine coating, which is supposed to stop dust and uh, fingerprints and stuff like that from actually sticking to the lens. Something else I'm gonna have to test out with time, so we'll have to find out about that feature as well. The last feature I wanted to talk about was shake resistance, which was listed on the Canon website, which also was called image stabilization. There's a switch on that for the lens right here, but it's supposed to give you five stops of shake resistance and image stabilization with the lens for video and photo. So without further ado, let's get into the image quality of this lens. I'm going to take it out and test it on my Ronin and just see what kind of smooth shots I can get with this lens. So you tell me what you think about those shots.
what you're seeing now is the 1080p on a 15 millimeter so this is basically as wide as you can get on this lens there's a 4k crop on this camera that people like to complain about on the EOS R I think it's a 1.7 times crop or 1.4 times crop on the EOS R but uh I kind of like it man because if you got a 15 to 35 millimeter lens and you got a crop on it in 4k so that means you actually get it's like you got two or three lenses in your bag because it crops in from the 15 to 35 on the 4k but the 1080p is excellent so if you want to get real wide you can keep it in 1080p and there's no crop on the 1080p but if you want to crop in a little bit you can go 4k so people complain about the crop but it actually gives you a little more reach so that's something i like about this lens for real man so what people like to complain as a cripple with this with this um camera it's a nice feature for real so i don't understand why people complain about it for real i like it just to be honest with you uh just to be noted um because i had a lot of ef lenses that i adapted to this camera at first the rf lenses take advantage of the eye autofocus a lot better like it's got a box right around my eye right now but on the um Let me let that truck go by but on the ef lenses and the sigma art lenses it's just a box around my head but actually on the rf lenses it recognizes what is an eye and it really focuses in in on my eye so that's just something to note about the rf lenses and why they're so expensive maybe that's got something to do with the 12 pin connectors that it has on these new lenses but just something to be aware of in conclusion to be honest with you the only negative thing about this lens is the price and if you add in the type of technology that you're getting you're going to be ahead of the curve you're going to have the latest lens um it's really worth it man that's why i went with getting a lens like this instead of spending that money on the r6 or the r5 man learn how to work the gear you have first like i haven't even had the r for a year so why would i upgrade to the r5 or the r6 i mean i understand the features and everything but work with what you have for man they they tease you with these videos sending the lenses and cameras out to all the peter mckinnons and all the people that like reviewing those cameras early and tease you with the videos in japan and italy making you think that it's the lenses and the cameras but i could have filmed the same type of video with my r you know what i'm saying so don't fall for that man spend your money on good glass and learn how to use what you got first man but that's gonna wrap up this review um i got a lot more reviews in the future coming up so make sure you subscribe but that's gonna be my verdict about this lens it's worth it so go ahead and pick one up spend the money on it it'll be worth it